Jesus is the Lord of life. Jesus is the great healer. He showed his power first by bringing the dead 12-year-old girl back to life and second by healing the woman bleeding for 12 years, restoring her into the fuller life. The power of the resurrection is really at work in Jesus. Brothers and sisters, in the Eucharistic celebration, let us express our faith that Jesus is the Lord of life, the master of life. Good day to you, my dear brothers and sisters. This is Father Ron Sandoval, SVD, and I welcome you all to this moment with Jesus, the Word of God. Today is June 30, the last day of the month, and the Church celebrates the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Join me in listening to and meditating on today's Gospel reading. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, Chapter 5, verses 21 to 23. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please, Come, lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and entered the room where the child was. He looked, he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talita koum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is a very powerful passage in, the, in today's Gospel reading. No? It speaks about the power of Jesus. It speaks of powers. First, the power of Jesus to heal, to bring back to life a dead person, and on the other hand, 
The power, the transformative power of faith of that woman thinking that just by touching the cloth of Jesus, she will be healed of her afflictions. And the power of intercession, the power of that prayer, that pleading of, the, of Jairus, pleading Jesus to come and touch and lay her hands on the dead 12-year-old um, kid. No? So the power of Jesus from his side and the power also that is within among us. No? Again, the transformative power of the faith of the woman and the power of um, the power of prayer, no? intercessory prayer on the part of Jairus, the synagogue official. The two women are um, Okay, they are in both um, but, uh, not healthy situation. The woman was, we go to the woman first, that was bleeding. Bleeding, um, according to the Jewish tradition or the belief of the uh, tradition during those days, she is impure. She is impure. And therefore, she is not capable of life. She is incapable of life. You know? And the little girl, um, at the age of 12, she is already capable of marriage and therefore capable of generating life. But then that life was interrupted because she died. Because she died. And so these are the two situations that is being presented into us. Many, many theologians are also saying that the two women are representations of Israel. The first woman is a representative of Israel as the, as the wife of the Lord, no? The bride the bride of the Lord. And she became unfaithful. She became um, no more capable of life. And she needed to come back to Jesus, to go to, to Jesus, as presented by this woman coming back to Jesus, so that she will be, um, be able to be fruitful once again. You know? And um, the little girl is also a representative of Israel who did not accept the Messiah. And so the, the, the Messiah was not there, and so she is just like a dead person. And the Messiah must come, the Messiah must hold her hand, so to speak, and lift her up, so that we will be back to life, and so that she will be fruitful again. So the end station here is to be fruitful. A person bleeding, incapable of life, was brought back to, to, to fruitfulness. And the dead uh, child, again, incapable of life, was brought to life by Jesus. No. Brothers and sisters, when again we are always being told that when a character in the in the gospel is unnamed, no, without name, the reader should take upon himself or herself the character. No. And so that means that these two women are representative of us and uh, it represents this condition where we are in. And again, we can only come back to Jesus. We can only return to Jesus so that um, we will be back to, to life. You know? The woman bleeding, um, look at her face. If only I can touch the cloth of Jesus, if I can only touch the tassel of Jesus. You know? It's just like also touching Jesus. She, she's not aiming at touching Jesus. She's only aiming at touching the cloth of Jesus. And if I touch her, I will be healed. My dear brothers and sisters, I hope that non-Catholics who keep on accusing us because we have images that we touch, because we have statues that we touch, and that is already idolatry. No, look at this. We do that and we believe in that because of it, it has its basis on the, on the woman, this Sari Phoenician woman. Mahawakan ko lang ang damit ni Jesus, ako ay gagaling. Ang damit ni Jesus ay hindi si Jesus, pero yun ay kay Jesus. No? The images, that is not Jesus, but it represents Jesus. It's, it represents someone who is holy. And so if only I can touch something holy representing that, I will be healed. Friends, that is not idolatry, that is deep faith. At sana maintindihan, maunawaan ng mga umaatake sa ating mga katoliko yung ginagawa natin, na may basihan yung ating ginagawa. It is not idolatry, it is deep faith. Maybe those people we are seeing touching the image, wala silang ibang pupuntahan kundi si Jesus at si Jesus lang ang tanging kanilang pag-asa. And that faith of touching the image is the one that could save them. Look at the words of Jesus later on. Woman, your faith has saved you. 
Ay ano bang, how is the faith manifested? By touching Jesus. By touching the representation of Jesus. Touching the cloth of Jesus. Touching the image representing Jesus or anyone who is holy. No? Your, your faith has not only cured you but saved you. Salvation means no more illness, no more death. No? And so, napakahalaga noon. At yun ang ginagawa natin mga katoliko. And I hope sana nga, those who are attacking us would somehow at least understand why we're doing that and we have a basis, a biblical basis for doing that. The woman was healed because of her faith in Jesus, manifested in touching Jesus. The girl was brought to life because of the intercession of Jairus. Jesus, please come lay your hands on this, on this woman and, and this, uh, on my daughter. No? And see, Jesus did that and uh, Talita Kung, no? Little girl rise up while holding the hands. Um, surely, that girl died again, <laughs> just like Lazarus who was brought to life but died again. But that is not the end of them and that is not the end of us in the very same way that all of us will die. Lahat tayo mamamatay, lahat tayo lilisan sa, 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 sa mundo ito. But that, that is not the end of us. Jesus promised not only that life in this world, but more importantly, that eternal life. Jesus who is resurrected from the dead, it will happen also to us who believe in Jesus that we on doing what he really wanted in us to do the good works, faith and good works. If we die, we will be resurrected also to life just like Jesus. And so we will die in this world, but we will live again. We believe, we profess that in the credo, the 11th and the 12th aspects, tenet of the faith, we believe in the resurrection of the body and we believe in everlasting life. But again, that faith is not enough. We should be doing good works. We should be following what Jesus did. No, We should uh, be healthy in life, in, in body and soul. No, We should be reconciled to God. No, we should be doing the things that we should be doing and we should be avoiding sin. Again, mga kapatid, if we are in the state of sin, we are dead. We are dead and we need only to come back to Jesus in the sacrament of reconciliation. On the day that Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead, he breathed on the eleven, the apostles, and gave them the authority to forgive sins. And so he gave, Jesus gave the church the authority to forgive sins. Yung confession po natin ay is not an invention of the church. Jesus is the one who instituted it so that we could be forgiven of our sins. And we have to go through this. We have to go back to Jesus through this healing of the sacrament of confession that we will be back to life. Mabubuhay muling tayo, patawarin ating mga kasalanan at papatubayin tayo sa buhay na walang hanggan. My dear brothers and sisters, in the sacrament, we can really touch Jesus. And we can also touch Jesus in the lives of the people around us through the good works that we do. This is how salvation is achieved. To touch Jesus in the sacraments, to just Jesus, to touch Jesus in the people living around us, to believe, to touch Jesus in his word. This is how salvation will be coming to all of us. Very, very beautifully put. And so this gospel is leading us how we can do this. Jesus is the Lord of life. He is the Lord of our salvation. And to Jesus, we will come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.